Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with episode two of the recap for episode two, right? This is a recap of episode two of our Traveler role-playing game that we play on Thursday nights. Uh, enjoy. So they make a jump, almost immediately, they make a jump to Torpal. Torpal is, it's kind of a dead world, right? There's all these worlds in the area are dead. Let me back that up. They've all been bombed by the Auslan. So they go to this planet. It's got an up port and it's got a down port. The up port is really kind of only a refueling spot. It doesn't have any repair work done. It doesn't really have any facilities for people to talk around or anything. So they go ahead and land on the planet. One of the guys on the planet, one of the provosts, meets the players and because they were asking about the bounty, and he tells them about this uh, couple of ships that came and attacked the port, and they attacked another ship, and then fled out of system, and gave them permission to look at the communicator data, gave them permission to look at the uh, surveillance footage, and any information they can provide, right? And so they're doing some research, and they find out that there is a ship captain on the planet, landed currently, that's doing work on his ship, because he ran into a pirate on the way out of system. Might have been one of the same pirates. And so he's on a ship called the Scaramund. And um, so they go find out where he's located. And they, they inquire about. And they find out that he's in a bar. So a couple of my players. Three of my players. Two of the brand new players. And the one player that's um, Alex. He's the one that's remaining from the original group. And then the two new players. Their characters go to this bar. One of the players. Because he's an ex-agent. And he's an undercover spy. He has a lot of stealth and diplomacy and deception type skills you know all the all the subterfuge type skills he figures that he it would be better served for him to use that to try to get on the ship directly and maybe find out some information on the actual ship uh, the uh, Scaramund the other two players decide that they are going to go talk to the ship cap and the let's start with the ship let's split this into two halves they speak to the ship cap first of all the ship captain is not in a good mood his ship has just been attacked by pirates it's damaged it's costing him a lot of money to put this ship back together. All, he's already in a pissed off mood. They approach him and start just immediately grilling him. Like they walk up to his table and just start asking him questions. They, they, they do come up to him and say, hey, what happened to you on your ship? And give us information. We demand it. I'm paraphrasing. They didn't actually say we demand it, but it felt like that. And, and to him anyway, it did. It felt like that. He's like, no, I'm not giving you any information because I already told the authorities and get out of my face. I don't care who you are. Just go away. Right. Let me drink my beer in, in, in quiet and in privacy. Then one of them says, hey, you know, I can, I can like buy you a an extra beer if you want, you know, if that'll help. And he's like, all right, buy me a beer and I'll, I'll tell you my story, right? So they made a good, they made it, they started a good conversation with him. They sat down, they asked him if, you know, what happened to a ship. And he told them that he encountered another ship called the Mercy's Company, and the, which is a scout ship. And it was, it attacked, but, you know, the Scaramoons got a few extra guns on it to help uh, defend it. They, they thought it was going to be an easy prey and his ship's not an easy prey. So he fired back and he cut him in the, you know, in the underbelly of the, of the ship. And then right in the middle of his conversation with, first of all, he already doesn't like these guys. He's just, he's only telling them the story because they bought him a beer. Right in the middle of the conversation, Kagar, one of my other players, just decides to interrupt him and order more beer, right? He says, okay, be quiet. I don't want to hear what you have to say. Let me order some beer. And this captain is like, okay, I'm done. You know, you, you asked me, you wanted to know my story. Well, tough shit. I'm out of here. So he just got stood up and left, right? And the players basically got butt kissed because he had not gotten into the important part. Like they didn't know anything. All they knew is what they already knew. Okay. Cutscene over to our spot. He's going into the hangar where this ship is being worked on. He sees flight crew walking around, you know, technicians, people doing some welding on the engines and the, the uh, side panelings of the ship. And he just walks into the cargo hold, just do 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 do, like he owns the place. Nobody stopped him. Nobody cares. So he walks onto this because there's nothing in the cargo hold. So they they go into the cargo hold and they, he's looking around. He's trying to find a computer terminal and that gives give him some information. And it doesn't. It just gives him like what kind of cargo they were carrying and it's like normal junk, you know. So he goes, you know what? I'm just gonna go straight to the bridge. So he will. He just walks up to the bridge and there's a pilot was on duty and he's sitting in the pilot seat and he walks in and the pilot looks back at him like uh, assuming that he might have been a technician or a mechanic or something like that, and he plays it off like that. He says, hey, I'm here to check your comms. Let me let me check your comms and I'll be out of your hair. You know, and so he sits down and he gets on the communicator and he and he sees that the Mercy's company uh broadcast a message over the radio 
right before they jumped out of system and it was picked up by the Scaramund. Uh, the Scaramund recorder sh had some Vargers talking and they nobody paid any mind to it. But the spy character, this, he speaks Varger. So he listens to the conversation, records it on his little on his little hand computer, and then he's out without any trouble. Nobody stopped him, nobody cared, right? <laughs> and so what the Vargers had said were, well, let's get the hell out of here, let's jump, and they, let's, you know, do you have the coordinates to Borite already set up or something like that. So they had a good idea that they jumped to Borite, which is another system. Once they got that information, they figured, all right, let's go to Borite. But let us let me say this. At the beginning of the game, before I did any of this, I introduced the two new players. I, I, I had to introduce them to combat. I wanted them to see how the mechanics of the game worked without, uh, and, and to kind of get them initiated to the game. So I did that by having a reticulin parasite, which is an alien from like the movie Aliens, you know, with Ripley and the Marines and Alien, you know, Alien. And so I had one of those drop out of the ceiling and just kill one of the people at the bar, Urban Icky. He, he had a Gauss rifle on him because it's lollable here with like Zippo. So he just unloads on it with a Gauss rifle and acid sprays everywhere. Um, Kagar ch charges at it with his sword and when he hits it, it sprays acid on him and it burns his suit. And so his armor gets destroyed. Our spy character has a taser. And so he's shoot. Well, they call him stunners. He's trying to stun this creature. Yeah. So they learned, they learned, you know, how to and they eventually took it down, right? They eventually took it down. And Kagar actually took a souvenir of the uh, alien's tail, which I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem with that. And then uh, I think that's cool. You know, he took a certain souvenir because he's excited about it, you know? And that that just, I was pleased for that. And then, and then they went and met the ship captain and blew that. And then he went and snuck on the ship and got the information about Borite. So then they jumped to Borite. They, they got all their paperwork in order. They got back on their ship, flew out to the outer edge of the system on their way out of the system okay on their way out of the system they encountered a merchant ship that was also on its way out of the system but they have a much faster ship Vaherg is actually maneuver six that's like ridiculously fast and this merchant ship was like maneuver one so they were easily able to catch it but in the but because they detected it so far away and they demanded its surrender and the captain of the Merchant ship said, hell no, we ain't surrendering. No way, we're out of here. We're almost to the jump point. We're going to get out of here and you guys can't do anything about it. Well, guess what? They just started shooting at the at the merchant ship with their particle cannon. And eventually, they knocked out the engine. So they couldn't get away. So then they flew up to it and they boarded it. And the merchant crew were not in any mood to do any kind of like fighting. So they just said, okay, take what you want, you know, and just leave us free. You guys can board us. We won't, we won't fight back if you promise not to hurt us. And they promised, they said, we won't hurt you. We're just here to get your cargo. And, and, uh, they said, okay, you know, whatever. But in the, but in the meantime, they'd put out some distress signals like help, help, help. Okay. They, started taking cargo, they started taking peace, people's personal belongings, they started like looking for the ship's captain's safe, you know, they they took everything that wasn't nailed down like mattresses and bed sheets and <laughs> things like that. They were trying to just basically just take anything of value, which that's not really a value anyway, but they did manage to maneuver some cargo boxes over to their own ship and a, about 30 minutes into them looting this ship, uh, they still had crew members on their own ship, you know, operating the ship while a few of the players were moving cargo back and forth. They detected a warship coming in uh, and it would be, it would, it's going to take it a long time to get there. So they figured, okay, let's keep looting and we can, we can jump once, you know, once we're done looting and then that, that warship's not going to, we're not going to worry about it. And then that warship launched missiles. It launched a dozen missiles, right? Twelve. That's right. A dozen. And they come flying in at 10 G. That's how fast they move. Because they're so far away, I told them it would take 10 rounds, which in space, uh, spaceship combat rounds are like six minutes. So I said, it's going to be an hour before those missiles get to you. And they're like, Okay, no problem. We got an hour. So they started unloading cargo. And when it got to about 30 minutes, I told them, that, okay, you got about 30 minutes before these missiles get here and they're going to blow your ass up. They said, okay, we'll just go ahead and 
leave now, right? So what they did was they learned something about jump travel, which I think they probably would have known already and it's my fault for not telling them, but they have to plot a course. And I told them, I said, I assume that you already plotted a course while you guys have been sitting here. You got people on the ship, navigators and stuff like that. They've been, because they have a couple of NPCs as well. I said, you got some people on the ship. They probably could have plotted that course ahead of time. But the actual engaging of the jump drive takes a number of minutes, right? A number of 10 minutes. It's a D6 times 10 minutes. So it could be an hour before that maneuver drive, I mean, the, the jump drive engages. They rolled a three. The missiles were 30 minutes out. I was like, they're cutting it close. <laughs> I allowed it to happen. So they, so they jumped out right as the missiles just ran out of fuel and didn't hit them. Okay, so then they jumped to Borite with this new set of cargo and stuff. At Borite, they were like, okay, we're at Borite. Borite's got nothing on it. It's like, they don't, you don't want to go to Borite. But they went to Borite, and they heard a distress signal coming from the gas giant. As soon as they heard the distress signal coming from the, uh, from the gas giant, that's where we called it. I said, okay, you wait. 